seconds before we join into this new season it's my delight to welcome you she will do the formalities of the proper welcome but can we pray in the spirit for it can we usher in God's presence for this new season of your journey it's a new season it's a new journey it's a new season it's a new day Father, we come before you. We begin to declare. Everabano tele du se pa. Imporoto di kada na matele du sia. Avele kumene ya la gababa roke ne ne ya. Esi si na ya ne. Rebede ni makato le pere tu se pe na na la mashata. Can we ask the Lord? Journey with us. Lead the way. Father, lead the way. We cannot go without you. If your presence doesn't go with us, we need you. Father, we need you. Spirit of God, we need you. Shaka Malamale. Impelaginaya. Ratako separadona. Lift up your voice. One more minute as we call his presence. Activate graces. Let your word come in strength. Open up destinies on this new journey. Let healing come. Deliverance. Deliverance. Let the strength of the most high be behind everything that we said. Pronounce even in this place. We come before you, Lord. By strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. Because the arm of flesh will fail. But you, thou, O Lord, are the shield for me. You are my glory. You are my glory. You are the lifter of my head. You are the one that stirs me up like a, like a giant from sleep. You are the one that stirs my spirit up. This is yet another journey. Father, we trust you. It's going to be conversational. But we don't want the spirit to be out of this conversation. So we anchor on you. We look to you, Lord. Saints of God, can we immerse the study of Abraham in the blood? The blood that speaks better than things. Jabara ma kumi na ya. Impele ni na kasa pa ya. Impele ne 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 kala kala ne. Daga na na ma kusi pa ya. Enda ni ose. Make sure the voice is being heard. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are declaring. Lord, you come ahead of me. Hila ko. Rege ne ya. Raba na ma no. Yes, that's in the second. Jabara ma 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 ma. You are the glory and you lift my head. We declare now, oh Lord, I receive you for me. You are my glory and you lift my head. Glory and you lift my head. 
testimony and the name that you call the Lord Most High, why don't you just give him some, pra some praise this evening. Yes, we go into a new season with praise. Amen. So can you just give God some praise tonight? For he is the glory and the lifter of our head. Good evening and welcome to Recharge August 2022 and a new season. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know, I know. After such an intense, what a way to welcome us and usher us into a new season of Richard and a new month and another edition on such a strong and powerful note. And just, you know, basking in the presence of the Lord, singing, worshipping, and just exalting the name of the Lord. And so I know I take some, taking some time to, you know, come back to earth. But once again, as we go into August, the month of August, and very importantly, this new season of Recharge, we go in with a shout. So can someone make some noise here this evening? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this how you shout? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're online, please make some noise where you are. Make sure you're shouting, you're just heralding this new season with a shout and rejoicing. Amen. You're most welcome. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Everything new. New month, new week, new season. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight, we'll go straight in. We'd like to welcome everyone very specially. You can see our joy is full. And in a moment, you'll understand why. And we know that if you're already not feeling that joy, you will feel it before the end of today's recharge in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, we have someone who is no stranger. After last month's powerful and strong recharge. How was it for you? It was awesome, wasn't it? In the comments, if you're online, please type one word. How was last month's recharge? It was strong. It was word, impartation, prayers, the law of increase. It was amazing. Week in, week out. We encourage you, if you didn't watch it, or if you were, if you were not a part of it, that's the beautiful thing about it being on YouTube. Head on to YouTube after today's meeting and catch up. But in, a, in one word, for those who are here, can you shout out, how was it for you? Awesome. I hear awesome. Phenomenal. I hear great. Phenomenal. I hear life-changing, increase, mind-opening, spiritually rejuvenating. Aha, there we go. So in, on the comments, or, you know, on YouTube, please share with us how it was for you. But let me tell you who's on tonight. Tonight, you know him as our firebrand. He's always smiling. Usually he's behind the scenes, but today he's in front of the scene. We have Pastor Ni Oshinubi. Good evening, everyone. Good to be here. Good evening, Pastor Ayo. Good evening, Pastor Nii. It's so good to have you tonight. Thank you, you for joining us. All right, we also have another familiar face. We love her, and she's, you know, beautiful woman of God, Pastor Rolake Akinkube Filani. Good evening. It's so great to be back on Recharge. I've missed it. So, so great to be back and participating. Hello, everyone. You're, you're welcome back. Can we all just say welcome back, Pastor Malakim? Welcome back. Yeah, thank you very much. We also have, he's a regular, so he needs no introduction. <laughs> we love him. He's our, you know, firebrand, amazing, setting the tone, resident pastor and resident pastor Richard. Pastor Jude, welcome. <laughs> I'm going to, it's one zero. I'm going to, I'm going to retaliate. But let's, let's, um, let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate uh, 
King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, you know, because we take it for granted many times that we go through one season and then we step into another, but it is his grace that it speaks to. Um, we love you. We don't take you for granted. Our ever elegant house audience, we love you. Let's celebrate yourselves, please. Yes. Amen. And for our friends online watching us, I see Chino Lo from Spain. I see a couple of us just joining from all, all over the world. Tell us where you're joining us from and put up the link on your, what's on your social media status and ask your friends to be part of this new season. It promises to be life transforming. God bless you and welcome to Recharge. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Jude. It promises to, to be life transforming. For those who follow us on Instagram, on social media, if you're not, please, this is a good time to do so because you get to have pre information before our live services. You can follow at mytph on Instagram and just see what we're up to. You know the topic we're doing today. And today is going to be really engaging and interactive. Now, talking about that, we have a wonderful audience, you know, coordinator and giving us the feedback from our online um, interactions, Tomiwa Oladele. So good to have you. Good evening. Good evening Pastor Ayo. It's amazing to be here on a new season of Recharge. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So it was important that we mentioned that because usually we you know the people on the stage do most of the talking and then we come into interaction towards the end when we have questions and we raise conversations or we comment however we are starting today as we often do with all you know most of our new series with an introduction so we're just going to be setting the tone for what to expect for the next 10 weeks as we do a deep dive study into the character and man called abraham and so today we're going to be asking questions, um, first from the panel and then from the audience. It's very practical. And as we often say for each of the studies that we do or when we come on Recharge, we are all studying. We are all coming together and reading about the character and the personality and the lessons from the Bible to come on a Wednesday like this to share. So the three dimensions we're going to look at in the life of Abraham, covenants, blueprints, and blessings. And so I just ask Pastor Jude, you know, when we're having the pre recharge conversation, we're talking about how wide the man and the, the personality of Abraham is. There are many dimensions to him and how we're going to... In fact, so like I said, we're going to, we need a year to truly cover him. But truly, I'd love truly. for you to, to just share with us what to look forward to. I'm personally excited. I know everyone on stage is as well. So it'd be great to find out from you what to look forward to in the next one month, 10 weeks. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for retaliation. Can we celebrate the delectable, beautiful <laughs> MC Compare, Pastor Ayomara? Say, well done. You do such a good job. Many times it's assumed to be easy until you have the mic. Yes. All right. Let's turn our, our Bibles quickly to Isaiah 51, verse 1 and 2. I like to read Isaiah. 51 from the prophet Isaiah 51 1 and 2. I didn't know about this scripture until about 15 minutes ago. I, uh, the Spirit of God, had singled it out for me to take a look at it and to begin today's conversation with it. And if you go there with me, I'll be well delighted. And if media, if you can help us with it, so those in the audience can track alongside. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were caught, to the quarry from which you have been hewn. Verse 2. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him, and I made him many I would like to read verse 2 from the Aramaic Bible in plain English it's a gaze to Abraham your father and to Sarah who conceived you for he was alone 
and I called him and I blessed him and I increased him. You know, stepping out, okay, stepping out of um, the month where we discussed the law of increase, where we talked about exponential expansion, the Lord felt us worthy to give us a template to gaze upon for a few weeks. Pastor Relake said it and said it quite justly that Abraham be has become a curriculum that we can study for one year and you have not scratched the surface. But we're trusting the spirit of God that in this season he will do so much justice and you can literally measure your growth and the depth of your revelation of God. What Abraham symbolizes is the depth of relationship. What Abraham symbolizes is vast. But we'll try to piece it little, in little bites so that at every, we want to assure you by the Spirit of God at whatever level you are operating at, there's something for you. And you can't remain at that level at the end of it. If you believe, can I hear an amen? Amen. Let, let, let the amen be as though you believe. Amen. I say, whatever level you are operating at, wherever this revelation finds you, it won't leave you there. Right? So, there we are, dis what we are discussing today, we, we, we put it in broad, and today it's like an intro, so we'll try as much as possible to just keep it in light bites so that we can then begin to break it down into deeper dimensions from next week. But I am certain that you also might have a few things to ponder on. So we're looking at covenants. We're looking at blueprints, patterns. And we're looking at blessings. Why, why these three shelves? Within these three shelves, we're going to be unpacking a lot of, a lot of um, other subtitles. But putting these three, under these three broad headings, throws light to the person and what Abraham has come to re represent in our lives. So on Sunday, we started this conversation in a sermon, and I'd just like to throw up a few things here before I allow the others to just give their opening speech. Now, Abraham is the only character in Scripture that was mentioned over 74 times in the New Testament. Right? Abraham, joining from Adam's set and all the way down, Abraham was the first character in the Bible that God got a bit personal in the details about his life. What we know about um, the man that lived the longest, what's his name? Met uh, Methuselah. The Bible says he lived 900 and what, 60 years? 970 years? The summary of his life, he begat sons and daughters. We, had, we have no contest, no content. Even Adam other than the father, Adam knew his wife and gave birth and gave birth and then that's it. But when the scripture got to Genesis chapter 12, as to where this journey starts, it begins to estray the life of a man called Abram from the awe of the Chaldeans. The Lord God called his father Terah, had encounters with his father. We have allusions to that in the prophets. But he didn't engage those things as much as Yahweh would have required. So God went to the next generation and out of his three sons, there had three sons, Nahor, Abraham, and Haran, and had a, a daughter that was Abraham's half-sister. So Abraham and Sarai shared the same father, but did not share the same mother, Right? So, apparently the Bible is, is silent about what happened to Sarah's mom. But Sarah is seen as Abraham's half-sibling. Right. So, in that place, God encounters Abraham, who happened to be the first of three gentlemen. And God called him. If you read the book of Art, I was telling them at the, at the, at the green room, that in the book of Art, you notice 
Stephen reveals to us that Abraham did not respond to God's call one time. First, he was called from the awe of the Chaldeans, Mesopotamia, but he journeyed unto Haran. And he stayed there for a season. Theologians believe that it was for five years. And his father died. You know, in the year King Uzziah died. Isaiah, um, who was it that said? I saw the Lord. So there was a recalibration. And God in his mercies embraced Abraham back again. If you look at the map, you are, is down here. Abraham journeys all the way up Mesopotamia to Haran. Then when the father dies, he begins his journey with God back. A few things will be a strain in the life of Abraham because Abraham is that character. Unlike Joseph, we see in our last study, we see a man who has some measure of stability. So all the way you see there's consistency in Joseph's life, right? From after the time the Ajabo thing wore out, right? He, he became consistent. But we see in Abraham, a man, tell me when to stop. We see in Abraham, just signal me, just wave and I stop. We see in Abraham a man whose flaws were not hidden from us. Beginning from that point of his call. And, but we see a man who wholeheartedly submitted to divinity. And uh, how do I say this? He threw himself at God with such reckless abandon. And for Abraham, it was so strong that in all his vacillation between flesh and spirit, between mistake, we see the vacillation between Sarah and Hagar, Ishmael and Isaac. We're going to look at all of that in details. Between staying in God's program for his life and journeying to Egypt and picking up a lot of baggages away from Egypt. Between God calling him and he's taking extra, extra luggage in, in his nephew Lot. But in all of that, the Lord waves a fine story of redemption, forgiveness, consistency, grace, supplies, increase. What a man to study. It was then Isaiah then declared. He said, look to the rock where you have been carved out from. Look to Abraham. Look to this syllabus, this template that God left for us in, in studying Abraham's life. We are going to be seeing a lot of parallels. We are going to be seeing a lot of types and shadows like Pastor Loho likes to put it. We are going to be seeing things that actually are metaphors representing not what they only stand for in that season. It's such a rich study that we're inviting you to come alongside us. If God declares, take this man as your example. This is the final thing I'll say. My mom is a math teacher and in, 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 in having been trained by her, I tell my friends in secondary and primary school that math is the simplest subject because that's what she put in, my, in me. You know, little wonder I studied engineering. Now, the simple thing, she gave me a template. I think it was my fourth year in primary school. So when you are given a problem, you, are, you must look for three things. Number one, what was given? The variables that were given. Number two, what is expected? Number three, what is the connector between what was given and what is not given? But amongst this, every smart mathematician will always leave what we call an example. For all of us that did the elementary British system of schooling, you know that you, cor you can corroborate this thing. They give you an example that if you study that example carefully, you'll be able to know what to do in the song. Abraham has become the template. Abraham, Abraham is the blueprint. Welcome to the new season of Recharge. Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Jude. Thank you for setting. Honestly, I don't know if, if it was it just me that as he was speaking, you were getting excited and just thinking of the many ways that we're going to look at the life and the blueprint of our father Abraham as it's often referred to. Was it just me? Everyone, right? Okay. So I'm going to ask, I'll start with Pastor Rorake and Pastor Nee, and then we'll come to the audience. Like we mentioned, this is, you know, a new season of Richard. 
an unusual meeting tonight. So we want to hear from you, the audience, a lot more than we would on a normal Wednesday. So I would ask, first of all, in terms of Pastor Jude has laid the foundation for our study for the next few weeks. Now it is, one, your thoughts around the character and the person of Abraham in the Bible, and then your expectations for the next few weeks. Hopefully, people who are watching can also begin to think because we want to be proactive this season. What are your expectations? The Bible says the expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. So you should come to God. You should come into a new season, into a new study with expectations. We'll come back to you to ask you, but let me start with Pastor Rolaki and then Pastor Nii. Thank you very much, Pastor Ayo. Um, you know, the interesting thing is that when I read the Bible, I'm always drawn to what I call more simple characters. <laughs> so the thought of Abraham, honestly, it scared me <laughs> because with a Joseph, it's kind of such a good person thrown in the pit, you know, um, Esther as well. But Abraham has so many dimensions. And, you know, Abraham is the kind of character study that theologians in the academic world, they're still, he's still confounding them. Uh, but you know, when you read the word of God, um, apart from the examples God gives us and the things God says, I always, the first question I ask myself, how, where do I see myself? I'm looking for myself in this journey and I'm looking for myself in this story. And I always like things to be relatable. So I can't say that I have lived in terms of some of the examples of lessons I learned in every way, but there's some that particularly stand out to me. Um, and the ones that stand out to me are really just answering the call. Um, I think that's really powerful. And the second thing that stands out to me broadly is, if, is when the call came, at what stage Abraham was in his life. I mean, he was like 75. And Pastor Jude had said that actually the call came maybe five years earlier. So at the most, 70, let's even say the first time. And for me, that was really very powerful and overarching this journey that he started in his very old age. In fact, way past retirement, that for me is really a beautiful, just even that fact alone is a beautiful story of when God starts with someone. It's not really about the timing in terms of age. We have a saying in many languages that when you wake up is your morning. And the fact that he even just answered it at that time was, was key. I think the other thing I would really say is really around this journey of faith. Um, you know, the Bible says it's impossible to please God uh, without faith. But the Bible also says that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So my faith, why I'm encouraged is Abraham had very big faith. But given his relationship with God, that faith, of even just answering and going may have actually been small to him. So there may be things he had done in his previous life where God had led him to the wilderness. So for him to now get to the point and say, get up and leave, or for him to get to the point and say, sacrifice your son. Maybe for Abraham at that time, that was his mustard seed faith because he's been on a journey of faith. Yeah. Now, my journey of faith could be the decision to move back from the UK to Nigeria. Uh, that was a big deal for me. To someone else, it's their mustard seed faith. So it's really this comfort that God really plays with us where we are so that we're not confounded by his call. We're not overwhelmed. You know, God is actually really merciful that when we get to the point where God calls us to do big things, he would already have been preparing us in little ways. And I was just really touched by Abraham's obedience and his journey of faith. And then the final thing I will say is, I'm not a theologian, I'm not a Bible scholar, but what is so powerful about the Bible is you start to see the reflections of the story of redemption from, in fact, go beyond earlier than Genesis 12. If you go to creation, you already start to see the story of redemption at the cross in the little things. So that for me is just a fascinating aspect of this whole study of Abraham and I'm just really excited. My expectations are huge. Uh, because this is a story, my expectations are really about what call do you want me to answer in, this, in, in my life at this point? What are those weights that I need to lay aside? So I want God to speak to me in a fresh way uh, through the story of Abraham. And, and for that, I'm really, really excited. 
Awesome. Thank you very much. So, our, well, personally, I, I, I don't want to keep speaking generally and because everyone would answer for themselves. But as each person is speaking, I'm getting more excited. As with every character study we've done in the past, we find that what we think we know pales in significance to what God then reveals to us as we begin to study even deeper. So that's really exciting. Thank you. Pastor Nii, your thoughts? Wow. So where do I start from? So I guess I should just say that I pass the ball back to Pastor Jude. <laughs> right. So when, while Pastor Jude was talking, it just felt so natural that we should keep listening to him. But I will try and, um, you know, say some, uh, some few th things that, you know, the story of Abraham just brings to mind. Um, and the very first thing for me is that the story of Abraham started in Genesis 11, where God walked with his father and actually got Abraham on the journey to Canaan, the promised land. Without Abraham, without Abraham taking that note that God had already started something up until Genesis 12 when God called him. And for me, just thinking about it, and I'm asking myself the question, does it mean that I've already started the journey of purpose even before I realized? Most times when they call or, you know, we, we start fitting the pieces together and start making meaning to us, and we think maybe there's a call of God Adventure, let me just say that there's a call of God upon everybody, everyone's life. So maybe when you're sensing that call, maybe your call is to be that great surgeon that will be working on, um, you know, people with cancer and getting them healed. And you're feeling this is the call. Maybe before you went to primary school, God had you on that journey to fulfilling that call in the first instance. And that's what I saw from the life of Abraham. That even before he realized it, he already started the journey to fulfilling purpose. And then in Genesis 12, you know, those things started manifesting and God started speaking to him. But maybe the question I want to ask Pijud, I would like him to speak to that. Why did God call Abraham? Because his father had three children. And why Abraham in the first instance? But, you know, if I think about the life of David and how David was called, then it, it brings to mind that maybe there's something about, the, about Abraham as a person that just attracted God to him. You know, something about his life, something about his person. I'm sure that through the weeks we are going to be looking at the life of Abraham, we're going to be seeing the things about Abraham that kind of attracted God towards Abraham. So there's something about us, you know, there's something about, you know, our lives really that could be in sync with, with God. And the, the other thing while Pastor Rebecca was talking about Abraham and faith, you know, I, I look at the man Abraham and, I, and I, I see someone that had so many flaws. You know, at some point he said, God, you could use my servant. At some point, you know, he had Ega. At some point, it was like, God, is there anything left for me? And, you know, it just brings to mind that if God could declare Abraham the father of faith, it declared him righteous because he believed God at some point after many shortcomings. That means there's hope for us. Yes. There's hope for us. It, was, you know, it just means that you know, regardless of how many times we've, we've um, you know, fallen, how many times we've had to pick up ourselves, you know, God can make something, something mighty out of our lives. You know, God can make something mighty out of our lives. And that's what, you know, I can relate to. You know, when I look at myself, maybe I look at my past and I see shortcomings here and there. I see how, you know, you struggled with instructions and obedience and particularly my mom's instructions. I struggled a lot, you know. And, and I know many people, many people can relate to that, you know. But then you see how God can pick you up. And God can still walk with us.
God can still make something great out of our lives. And for me, that's one of the things I would like to um, see as we, you know, dive deeper into the lives and times of Abraham. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Nee. Thank you. Pastor Drew, did you want to respond to some of the questions he directed to you? Check. I feel when we get into this conversation, we'll begin to peel it up. But he answered it already. You know, God said, I'll have mercy on whom I'll have mercy. We, can, we might not be able to go into the rubrics of um, selection or the, what God used as his um, benchmark. However, we see in, in, um, in the pattern that God dotes the accurate response such that the Spirit of God is gentle. And at the end of the day, he will only nurture. God had a big picture. Abraham was um, a piece in it. So, I think one of the things we know from scriptures is that the level of your response to God endears him to you. So, but as we journey on, we'll find out a few things about the man Abraham that made him stand out. Yeah. Is this awesome. the point where we, we Yes, we, we come ask. Back to the, I wanted to say something yeah. and then we'll yeah. go to okay, the audience fine. in terms of expectations. Like we mentioned, we won't be doing all the talking because all of us should have expectations by the grace of God and what we're looking forward to learning or gleaning from this study. As Pastor, Pastor Nii spoke my thoughts in terms of what well, two things most fascinating to me in the life of this man called Abraham. The first is that when we looked at the story of Joseph, who was our last character study, we saw a man who was described as faithful and a man full of integrity. So that even when he was tempted to, you know, short court by probably sleeping with Potiphar's wife, he refused. He said, why would he do this thing and sin against God? Unlike, well, Abraham was also a faithful, I mean, God called him his friend. He was, he's referred to as a friend of God. And God gave him a promise of a son, like Pastor Niyi said. But he didn't, he wasn't straight and narrow all the way. And I believe that this would speak to a lot of people who God gave a promise. And you feel that because you've made a mistake, you probably would not be able to come back to what he had promised you initially because you're not like Joseph who didn't, you know, lie with Potiphar. And it's just a story of hope that God can steal. He's a covenant-keeping God. His promises are binding. And even if, you know, we as infallible human beings that we are, we miss it along the way, his mercy is available. And so to let you know that if God gave you a word or a promise and you feel like by your actions you don't qualify any longer, there's still hope. And God is still able to bring it to you. Then the second part for me as well that I'm looking forward to looking at is that how did he, you know, the fact that God promised him that he was going to give, make him a father of many nations. But we all know that he had only two sons, at least before he died. So he had Ishmael through the bondwoman and Isaac. So in literal sense, he didn't see the many nations that God had promised him because if God comes to you as someone who is expecting and God tells you, I'll give you many children, you would want to be like Hannah who had a Samuel, gave him to God and then had six other children, right? Not that you just have the one. But Hebrews paints a picture because Hebrews also talks about the faith of Abraham. Hebrews chapter 11, I'll just read um, from, from verse 13. He says, all these people prior to that, the Bible had talked about the faith of Abraham and Sarah, who by faith received the promise of a son. And they said, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. That's a deeper level of faith for me. The fact that they believed unto death. So the fact that they didn't see the manifestation in quote he died believing that what God said was going to come to pass and so God gave him a transgenerational promise even though he didn't tell him that it won't be you that all the sons will come from that's a deeper level of faith 
So I'm hoping that we'll be able to learn. I'm looking forward to my faith being, you know, being charged and being believing God until death. So that even if you're dying and it doesn't look like what God has said, you believe him. You know that if God said it, he will do it. And they said, they, they believed this because they knew that there were nomads on this earth. There's more to us than this earth. This earth is not our final destination. So there's still, we, are, we transition, we don't die as Christians. We just transition from one, you know, from our earthly bodies to, to, go, to going to be with our Father. So that's a deeper level of faith for me, and I can't wait to learn that. And so now I'm so open to, you know, to everyone out there, you know, to our audience, and to just hear you speak about your expectations. I'm looking forward to my faith being challenged and to see, like Pastor Jude had mentioned, that we've all said blueprints of this man called Abraham. This is how I feel you should go, Tomiwa. We're going to randomly go into the congregation. It's one simple question. When you hear the word Abraham or the name Abraham, what picture comes to your mind? Right? So if the microphone is passed on to you, you can say one, two. A phrase or a word. And then you can also tell us your expectation for this season. All right? Okay. So let's create an expectation board. Can we do that? Yeah. All right. All right. Clap now. Let's clap. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have Peter. Praise God. Amen. Um, good evening. Good evening. So, um, reading from Genesis 12, um, from verse 1, it said, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house. Verse 2 said, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great. And let me just go to verse 4. It says, And so Abraham departed. Um, Reading this verse, I just saw a man who trusted God and wasn't really necessarily thinking about what the promises that God has said, but you know what, God, I am going all out with you. And also, I saw a man who, who had just more than leadership skill, who people could trust because he didn't just go alone. He went with, um, I think he went with, he went with, with, he went with Lot, he went with his wife, he went with his brother's son. And they, they could just see that, okay, you know, we trust this man because he trusts God. So really, for me, in this series, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to boosting my trust level on God. Praise God. Amen. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate Praise him. God. Amazing. Praise God. So, so you can dro drop your expectation also on the chat if you're joining us virtually. Um, tell us what, what comes to mind when you hear the name Abraham. Sirai, what, what, what picture is created in your spirit? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Good evening, Pastor Jude. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, so what I find most fascinating about the character of Abraham is charting a new part of faith that wasn't existing. I studied before Abraham. When God approached Abraham, he didn't tell him like he told his son, Isaac and then Jacob. I am the God of social -so person and those people had the privilege of a reference point that I could, I could see this person walk with God and prove and proved God. Therefore, I should walk with God. So, God approached this guy from nowhere, gave him the most incredible assignment, move from where you are living to where it's unknown, leave your family and this guy believed God. And my Take away my expectation. What I'm tying to this series we are studying is that I'm trusting God to find something new that I'm not going to be doing, taking steps of faith that I'm not going to be doing because I saw anybody that had to do that. Amen. Whether it's in my career or in family, I'm Hallelujah. looking for new things that God could commit into my hands and in my heart and say, do this, and I could trust Him like Abraham without any reference point Hallelujah. and be able to get that done. Amen. Amen. I, 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 Pastor, I thought we should do something. Can we just lift up our hands and pray those expectations? You can bring your own. We're not done, but it's just pray. Those are so profound. Uh, uh, Peter wants to go to a new trust level. Pastor Chiago says, I want to, I want to break the mold. Nakade, let this see paroda. Shikapane. Pray with me, please. 
Jimokona, in Kalamani and Okoko, Rete Tusipa to Kashkai, in the Lettisa Tata, in the Rayana Pagan, in the Baroko, in the Kaparoko, Lord, I look to you this season. Let something new be ignited in my spirit. In Vonia Catalete Tiakupa, Vefe Venuka, let Tunis Sesedekia, thank you, Father, Manaka Shaka, Kapaleto. Amen. 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 All right. Before you know, okay, we want to go on. Okay, just one more. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. I think I'm pretty much excited. And you know, just looking at Abraham, Pastor, you said something. He said Abraham is a template. And Pastor Olaike well, said something as well that there are so many dimensions to Abraham that it looks like God packaged the entire gospel in one man, in one man's story, in one man's journey. Our journey as believers can be dimensioned from beginning to end, just looking at Abraham. And you know, in the Bible, it's just like Jesus, whenever he encountered his disciples, he said, follow me. That was the first thing he said. And in Abraham, we see God saying to a man, follow me. And that journey culminates with him saying to Abraham, give me your only begotten son. And our journey as a believer is God wants to see his reflection in us. Because that's what God was going to do. And he refined Abraham to the point where he could see himself in Abraham. And I believe as believers, this is what we're going to find out in this journey. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take a few more, but we want to just take a, a worship time, a time of worship. Just go in and just... You know, when Pastor Jude asked us to pray, I thought that was so, so important. Because at the end of the day, it's God whose, whose responsibility it is to meet and surpass our expectations. So let's just take some time out to worship. And as we believe in God to open our eyes and our hearts to receive from him this season. When we come back, we'll take a few more and then continue. i 
forever to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who sits on his throne. In glory and honor is he clothed. And so we lift up our voices and worship the Lamb of God who sits on the throne. We exalt you, Father. Just lift up a praise to God. We exalt you, the lion of the tribe of Judah, we exalt you, hallelujah, we exalt you Lord, amen, amen, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, yes, let's celebrate the king of glory. What a privilege to serve the one who sits on the throne of glory. What a privilege and an honor to be able to bring a sacrifice of worship and of praise. Amen. Thank you so much, One Nation. Thank you, One Music. God bless you. Thank you very much. You know, when we start to worship like that, we don't want to stop. <laughs> yeah. We want to keep going. Yes. But, you know, we, we, for those who are just joining us and you came into the time of worship, thank you for coming. You're not too late. Before, the, before we went into a time of worship, we were looking at just setting the tone for the new season, studying the character of Abraham. And we were creating, like Pastor Jude has called it, an expectation board. And we want everyone to come along with us on this. So you might not get the mic or we might not read your comment out, but have an expectation in your heart. And so we're going to go straight to Tomiwa to share with us some of the, I've seen some fantastic comments on YouTube. Please share with us what some people have said are their expectations. Thank you very much, Pastor Aya. So I'm just going to read some of, there are a lot, so I'm going to just pick some randomly because if I say I should you know, roll through everything, we'll probably spend the night here, right? Um, so we have MM says, I'm looking forward to blueprints for a deep level of friendship in God. Yeah. That is her expectation. Yeah. Amen. Um, Angela said, says, my expectation is learning to trust God, even without knowing God's next line of action. Mm. Wow. Yeah, um, we have Caroline who says, what comes to my mind is him trusting God without knowing where he was going to. Um, Oluwa Loshe Ifumi says, I'm looking forward to carrying promises of God that is transboundary and transgenerational. Amen. It should be me and God that he'll take further. Amen. Yes, we have another one that says... Um, I'm currently studying his life and when I saw the notification I was excited to join because I'm really just curious how did he do all that and why was God so interested in him Linda wants her faith to be pushed up after this teaching Amen. Um, Caroline she wants to be able to go all out for God just trusting him on a deeper level. Amen. Um, Tolly says, what comes to mind for Sarah is that the covenant was also for her. Mm. She assumed it was just for Abraham when she suggested that he sleeps with ha slept with Hagar, but God reaffirmed her that she was part of the plan. Hallelujah. Um, Chioma says, uh, so Chaman leaves a comment on Abraham mm. that Abraham trusts without any reference points. He was a fool for God. God trusted him, maybe because of the level of trust he had in God. Hallelujah. Fantastic. I think we can stop at that. Right? Yes, we can. we can. Thank you, Tomiwa. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who also shared online. Thank you. God bless you. Now, you know, whilst we're speaking, one of the things I wanted to ask is, as everyone has shared and we've shared our expectations, I'd like to ask us here, when you think of Abraham as a man, a friend of God, do you see yourself? Because, you know, do you see yourself in some of the things he had to go through or some of the aspects that we're going to be studying in the next few weeks? 
Okay, I, I like to call that my Abraham moment. Your Abraham moment. Thank okay, you, Pastor. Okay, my Abraham Jim. moment. Hashtag now, my Abraham moment. Uh, uh, you should take note because I'll come back to you. It's going to be quite interactive. We're learning together today. And and one of the things I told, um, before I go to my Abraham moment, one of the things I told, Pastor, we, we discussed today was, we're going to be sharing some of the tips of how we study the Word of God so that you can understand that this thing it's it's at, it's bad we are living in an era of revelation and it's it's right you can you can you can you can touch it you can feel it you know there was a time where we we, we needed to get a day study bible that is the, the size of this loudspeaker for you to do your cross-referencing and all but i have them some of the most wonderful bible apps that I was soon going to be recommending to you at the end of this meeting somebody should just remind me right and also bible study methods because you need to join in this groove. We're not going to go and study and come and regurgitate. We are all going to go on this journey together. Does that look like a great plan? Yeah. Let's clap to that. Let's clap to that. Good. Let, let me take it from where Pastor Kaedea King Elu stopped. He said, looking at Abraham, you see someone who God began to pour himself into until God could literally see his reflection in that mortal called Abraham, right? God kept tweaking, changing, correcting, grooming, growing until it came to the point in scripture, Abraham is one of those that were referred to, the first person actually that was referred to as the friend of God. You know what friends are? You are fellows in a ship. You, you, you are pairs. There's, friendship is fellows in a ship. So what it is is that for you to be, you have to come to the same level for you to really, the Bible says two cannot work together except they agree. So Abraham was operating at a God level, right? There's been a, a deposit of God. So tangible, so deep, but yet so relatable. You, you, you can identify yourself right in the middle of it. And that, that, that's what I'm trusting God for, really. is tying all of your expectations together in mind. But speaking that at the end of the day, you know, like the beloved, the John, like Daniel, these guys who enjoyed such an intimate relationship with God, we discover that God empties himself out to them. There is a prophetic dimension in being friends with God. Right? One thing we're going to study is God said, can I, can I do this thing without telling my friend? I'll be breaking an oath of friendship. So if you look at the apocalyptic revelations, like what we have for Daniel and what we have for John, it is no wonder that these things were revealed to the people that have this level of being called friends with God. Daniel saw half the book of Revelation. And John the Beloved interpreted it. And John the Beloved always had his head on Jesus' bosom. Right? The same way what John the Beloved was to Jesus is what Abraham was to God the Father every morning his waking moments were in god so the bible said god came to him early in the morning because abraham would rather talk to god first than anyone else abraham is a very relatable being when he does not know he would say i don't know he said to his son god will provide he didn't start providing some theological christianese for his son he just said to him, i'm so certain that this god will provide so my Abraham moment is just that that sense that there's a man that walks this earth. Ah, menagiladesa, jabo lakinana. There's a man. He had flesh and blood like me. He was born of a woman, and he interacted with God so much. God wanted to put vengeance or make vengeance on the city. God felt he had to take permission from him. I, I am trusting God. I have come to that point where I felt that imposter syndrome. You too, you can give word of knowledge, right? You, 
you too, you can prophesy. Right? right? But in Abraham, you see that irrespective of our flaws, irrespective of the fact that Abraham committed adultery. So that's what is made. Forget the fact that the wife enabled it. But Paul, if he, if he, <coughs> let's not go into that. If he probably had not harbored it before, it would sound strange to him. So with all our flaws, he, he calls us. He chooses us. So every morning I see myself in Abraham. I want to know his ways. I want to search deep into him. I want to press into him. Because Abraham in history was recorded to be the wealthiest man in his time. So seeking God first therefore guarantees every other thing. He was so confident in the fact that he carried the blessing. He told his brother, Lord, his nephew, look around you, choose anywhere and go there. Me, wherever I go, the blessing goes. There was a rich depth of fellowship. He was confident in who he was. So many times people come to me, I'm Pastor Jude, the word of knowledge, and, and, and they're surprised. I, for me, the, my integrity is not at stake. It's the fact that God has spoken between Sunday and today. I've had barrage of messages saying I did the praise six hours, 24 hours praise, and my life has just tremendously opened up. One of our guests said, I, I just took the challenge and I have never seen the kind of supplies I've seen, and now it's just Wednesday. She said, I couldn't wait but to share this with you. She was a minister in that meeting. So God is in a he is in a hurry to express himself. And he's looking out for you to open up yourself for it. Yes, Pastor. Amen. Yes. God is in a hurry to express himself. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Pastor Jude. My Abraham moment, Pastor Rolake. Wow, Pastor Jude. Eh? <laughs> we need to sit at your feet more. But um, so um, thinking about my Abraham moment, um, I will take it from the perspective of some of the highlight stories in his journey and um, try and make it as practical. So when I was thinking through the call of Abraham and what it would have had to take him to do that, um, my mind went to my marriage. Sorry, I'm not going to turn this into a relationship. <laughs> Please was, turn it into anything. But you know, you just have anything to relate it to the different a, 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 points of your life. I, where I was you going are. to sorry, and I remember, just hold your thoughts. Yeah. I was going to say that another beauty for, uh, of Abraham's study is the family life aspect. Yes. You, you very, just, very big. You and just the relationships. see the typical complicated yeah. Christian exactly. home. Exactly, exactly. And who calls the shots? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. But, but that's even not the angle mm. I'm coming. But I remember, you know, when you're at the, for those who are married or who've recently taken vows and you're at the altar, and marriage is a covenant, right? Yes. And God's, God had a covenant with Abraham. And I remember one of the things the priests would say is forsaking all others. Mm. So you're entering into a covenant. And so, and it was kind of maybe the Holy Spirit speaking to me now and convicting me. And that was an Abraham moment for me because I was thinking of the concept of covenant. and How can I relate that to my life? And my marriage is, and the forsaking all others is not even about cheating or stepping out of your marriage, adultery. It's really about the prioritization um, that you give to that particular area of your life and what it would take to really be in that covenant. So if the one who makes the covenant with us has attached certain promises to that covenant, there are certain blessings attached, but there are also certain sacrifices that are required. And that was a really practical example I could give. So the conviction that came to me, Lord, what am I really sacrificing to make this really work? That was number one. Uh, number two was really the times in my life where I've tried to help God out. So God has made a promise to me and he says, this is going to happen. He hasn't given me the full picture. And remember, if you look at Hebrews, I think Hebrews 11, 8, when he refers to Abraham and he says he didn't even know where he was going. Um, and that is a good endorsement of Abraham, but Abraham didn't know where he was going and he still tried to help God out on part of that journey through Haggai, right? Through, yeah. um, you know, the maid seven, seven, exactly. Yeah, in fact, Sarah was the one who yeah. was actually really trying to help God out. Um, and that was, that really spoke to me is 
he was a man of faith, but even on that faith journey, there were some things that suggested that maybe he didn't really always trust God consistently at all times. And so that was part of his floor. And the thing is, God still has a covenant he will keep, but there are consequences. And one of the results is Ishmael, right? So you can't even just get rid of Ishmael. And it was like, he kept digging a hole, like he banished them. And, and so that was another Abraham moment for me that where in my life have I not really fully yielded or trusted? And where am I trying to engineer things to work out even when I know God has said, Rolake, leave it. And then um, a third area was really around building an altar. And here I think of the marketplace. And you know, there were two points during the journey of the call where Abraham built an altar. Uh, that was really powerful because it was almost like he's called to a certain place even though he knew God from where he was called but where he went to he established God's presence and so what came to me is the reflection of the light of who I am in the different circumstances and it's really interesting when I was coming this evening and I was trying to leave work early and someone was asking me where are you going and you know, your temptation is always to say, oh, I have business to take care of. But I actually just said, you know what, I'm actually going to church. I'm going to sit on a panel as part of Abraham. And, you know, interesting conversation pursued, uh, uh, followed after that. But it's really about the domains that God has called to me. How am I building an altar? And when I think of an altar, I think of worship. Um, worship is a lifestyle. But I also think of sacrifice um, in that place. And is it sacrificing of my pride or my ego my identity is that i'm really a christian i'm just a christian in the marketplace so i should really be telling people and showing that i'm a christian not being ashamed of it and that is an altar of worship that i'm building to god so there was just some of my abraham moments i thought i would share and relate them to you in a very practical way thank you fantastic, fantastic. thank you so much thank you very deep thank you pastor Nee. Hello. So what is left to say? Well, um, for me, my, my Abraham moment, um, it's, it's just that it's a journey. It's a journey. You know, when God called Abraham, you know, out of his father's house, at some point, I think in Genesis 17, he was saying to Abraham, he said, walk before me, I'm the perfect. You know, and then, you know, at some point, I think it's in Hebrews where the Bible was talking about that Abraham... Bible says he looked for a city that has foundation. He lived in tents, even though in the land of promise, because he looked for a city that has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. So all through that spectrum of starting with God, even till he, he had his last breath, Abraham journeyed with God. And for me, that's my, you know, Abraham moment that it's all about a journey with God. It's all about, you know, just continuously trusting God, just walking with Him. Um, despite all the things, um, you know, the shortcomings, however we look at it, Abraham never ran away from God. You know, you know, if you look at things right now, sometimes when we have some, you know, maybe some things happening in our lives, you know, most times we feel, maybe I should not go to church today. Maybe I should not have my devotion this morning. But Abraham, irregardless of whatever it was that plagued him, still went back to God. Till he got to the point where God called him his friend. And Abraham had the faith of God. And also my Abraham moment is that my faith may start like a mustard seed, but my faith can grow. In my faith may, yes, because Abraham had the faith to receive Isaac back, literally. Because when God told him, go kill your son, Isaac, literally, Isaac died. The promise died. Imagine, you know, maybe the promise God gave to you and God saying, leave that at the altar. Leave that at the altar. I gave you that promise. I'm asking, I'm demanding for that promise back. And you are saying to God, God, I've told all my friends about the promise. Lord, you know, I've lived all my life for this promise. Lord, you know that, in fact, the reason why I am where I am now is for that promise. And God says, leave that promise at the altar. 
the 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 ability to live it at the altar trusting that he that promise is able to make it good he that promise even though he is able to make it good that faith did not come in one day it came as abraham journeyed with god for me my abraham moment is that god can turn one man to a generational blessing do you know that even in the other religion they still talk about abraham that's how powerful this man is you know abraham represents for me a vision that never dies abraham for me do you know that after jesus abraham is one of the you know people most talked about why you see the name in um, us you see the name you see go to israel you see in another version if you come to nigeria you see the name everybody wants to associate with abraham the concept abraham started as and that was why i believe god was referring pg to that verse that looked to abraham i called him alone my translation says when i called abraham he was but one man meaning that whatever it is that started as one that started as little no one that scripture says say, despise not the days of little beginning oh, despise not the days of small things because big things don't start big it's that small now all we need to do is just release ourselves to god you know that dream that started so little god is able to turn it into tools that he will use to bless generations one thing for me my abraham moment was at the time of his death maha at the time of his death Abraham had two seeds. Well, according to the, the little that I've gleaned from the scriptures, Ishmael and Isaac. But you know what God told him? Father of many nations. Now we see it looking back. Indeed, is the father of many nations. We see it that indeed, in fact, Jesus had to say a parable about Abraham that Lazarus, a man, was in the bosom of Abraham. That talks about what God did through Abraham. But yet in his death, he had just two. It, it speaks to faith in God irregardless. Faith in God irregardless. Because really what God was producing from the life of Abraham were not the things that we are looking at. But God was painting shadows of the coming of Christ Jesus, the life and times of Christ, our redemption in him. Even things that we will get to heaven and we will see, God, did, did you make this out of the life and times of Abraham? And really speaks to us also that we are living for things beyond now. If all that we have hope for is everything that is on this earth, we are of all men most miserable. We live not for the now alone. We live for eternity. We live for eternity. And, and really that's what God is trying to produce in our life. Things that speaks beyond the realm of the natural into eternity. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So many realms of glory and revelation. Thank you so much, Pastor Nian, for just sharing the different ways and, you know, that you see yourself in Abraham, especially for us today, you know, because at the end of the day, we're studying it for a purpose. We must begin to see ourselves and see how, well, or how God is speaking to us in different ways. I'm going to throw it to the audience. So I know some people have been sharing already. And it would be great to hear from you, your Abraham moment, and to hear what you have to say. So as we, as we spoke, I'm sure some things came to mind. It might already have happened, or you might you know, be seeing it in the near future. Please share with us. Thank you, Pastor Ayo. So I wasn't sure I was going to start this way, because I was just... The assignment is to come to the crowd <laughs> and get your Abraham moments. But you know, God dropped something in my heart in the car when I drove in. And I shrugged myself. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to share this in church. And as I was sat, you know, it came to mind again that Tommy, why well, you don't know who is struggling with this, you know? So I'm just going to share it. I'm going to share my Abraham moment first before I come to the church. So a couple of years ago, I was in a relationship that I thought that was leading to marriage. I, I felt like I was 
you know, this was it. First things first, the first thing that, my first Abraham moment would be, what is God's promise to you, right? So I had a promise, or I have a promise, which is between me and God, concerning my marriage, right? And so in this relationship, I thought, okay, this is God's fulfilled promise, you know, because it, it looks like it fits the bill. But for one reason or the other, I could, it was clear that God was saying to me, come out of this relationship. And it was so hard because there was no reason, there was no fights, there was, no, there was, there was, there was nothing that I could, but it, it was a clear instruction. And, you know, for a long time, I, I fought it. But it kept coming back, right? And it felt like God was asking the impossible of me because I felt like, you know, this is it. Like, this is what you promised. And I mean, by the grace of God, <laughs> and I tell you that it's, it's the grace of God, you know, I was able to, you know, come out of that. And even co in coming out of that, I remember saying to God that, ah, God, will I ever find, would I ever find something as, you know, but I can categorically tell you now, <laughs> without a shadow of doubt, that God has something planned. You know, like if he gives an instruction, however impossible that the instruction might seem, however it seems that, you know, he's asking of you the, what you think that seems impossible, trust me you might not see it then and a couple of years ago is 2015 we're in 2020 right it might not happen when you think it will happen but i can assuredly tell you that when god gives you an instruction he has a plan and that's my own abraham moment so wow. i'm going to yeah thank you so much no thank you i'm um, sure that was for someone I'm thank sure. you it was for someone <laughs> um so do we want to share I'm just going to walk randomly too. Perfect. Thank you. Please, if you're online, you can share. You can begin to type if it's a long one. At least before we go around, we'll come to you. So please make sure you share with us as well. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is TJ, and I'm actually excited to share my brand moment. Hello, TJ. Um, <laughs> Uh, a month ago, I made a decision regarding my job, which was very scary for me. I remember signing the document and crying so much because I was like, oh my God, this step is, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. And it was really, really tough. And now it's like, it's been a month and still there, there's, there's no, um, would I say, assurance or any evidence in front of me that, oh yeah, that was the right choice you made. But one thing I have been holding on to is God's joy and peace. And I would say it's amazing how Abraham was able to step into places that he had never been to before. Because imagine exploring places that you, you have no idea. Am I going to see um, some scary creature I haven't met before? Or people that wouldn't be, wouldn't be nice to me? Racism. I mean, look at the world that we're in right now. There's just so much going on. So having to take that step and do that was major for me. But I have maintained, like I have held on to God's peace and joy. And even when I think about that decision I made, I'm like, you know what? I'm good. God is definitely going to take care of me. And also staying um, true to consistently studying God's word, being here in church, fellowshipping with everyone has um, reminded me of one thing, that God will take care of me. So, um, yeah, that is my Abraham moment. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Do we have? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much for this time. Um, I wanted to share this when we were talking about our expectations um, for this night. Whenever I hear, I hear that name, Abraham, the first thing that comes to my mind is Father. Um, um, when I was in Jester, I lost my dad. So there's just something about Father that God opened my eyes to. And there's just something about God when it comes to the way God behaves. I mean, when God talks about his name, he said, he say, call my name and the God of Abraham. And then he doesn't just stop there. He, he reaffirms that thing in the sons of Abraham. He would say God of Isaac 
I, he will go again to reaffirm the same thing in the son of Isaac. God of, I, I was praying one day. I said, God of, okay, what do these guys know? Okay, you are the God of blessing. I put my name, name there. But this night, I am expecting that whatever Abraham and his sons and sons' sons know, that I've got them to the place of having their name close to God. I really want to see God of blessing in action. Whatever it is, whatever revelation they had. I, I remember Galatians 3 verse 29 says, And if you be Christ, then you are heirs. heirs you are Abraham's seed. The, the, the whole picture is getting more clearer. I, I, and I'm trusting God that after this very, I will get that revelation where I can be able to call. I can even hear God say, I am the God of blessing. Can, can we make that a prayer? While you're clapping for her, can we make that a prayer? Lord, visit me so strong. Lord, visit me so strong. Let the depth of this revelation be such that you can connect your person to my to, to me as a person. Like you can connect the experience. My sister. My sister said, I left everything and I followed God. I followed God because I feel I heard him say, it's time to trust me. Say, Lord, let this season birth a faith in me that produces obedience in the name of Jesus. We're not done with the session, but we don't, we don't want to lose that moment to pray. I just bet, I just bet revelation. I just bet grace. Yes, yes, the Spirit of God is here. His grace is being released. Many are coming into, into the revelation of His blessing. As we journey on, this is our declaration. This is our profession. Yes, Lord. Amen. To me, I think we can take two more. Yeah. Yes. There was a hand in front. I think there are two hands in front. A lady. I see a lady. I see a gentleman. And several other hands are coming up here. Yeah? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mike. Managan. Um, interestingly, this, um, this morning, I was talking to a friend. He had this heavy burden. And he said, Mike, I feel you have abandoned me. And, and I, I've been waiting for this, that mo moment to address the situation. This person is my very good friend and I've been pulling him along for some time. And it seemed as though he was pulling me back. And I had clearly, you have to save yourself first before you save this person. And I was giving him an illustration about the Bible, I said, see, you are, we are both Christians. And I call you at night as my partner. I said, let's pray. Most of the time you are slumbering. And I said, I go to a living church. You find it hard to go to church. And this is where we are. I try to get you to come on Instagram. You say you don't want to open an, an account. Come on, YouTube is an issue. I said, we just finished Faith Boot Camp. And I was trying to even still get you to understand the frequency that things are going. I said, in March, there was a prophecy about our business, but it was for me. And I gave an example of Abraham. I said, Abraham trusted God and he brought his son for sacrifice. This is where I am. Call me stupid. Call me mad. But this is where I am. I am 45. And I have a very clear picture now. I don't want to tell you. I said I don't want to tell you what is happening right now. But when I cross that bridge. And I have the bag. I will come back. 
and get you. But for now, this is what I'm going to tell you. Baba, get up. Shake these things off. You can't be in the comfort of your house in Benin and the battleground is Lagos. Study Abraham. And I went further. I said, I make reference to Pastor Jude. I said, Abraham had a covenant with God. And that was Israel. I made reference to the Moab king. I said, you need to understand those things. This is God, man, and you. Let's join it there. And that was it. And today, I walk in here. I, I, I didn't know we were going to go through Abraham. I didn't I couldn't be walking here and all of this is going on. I just said, God, I thank you for giving me that release for, for me to give him that response. Telling, that response. And that was it. And I feel fulfilled. What, what a God. profound thank you. Abraham moment. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. God bless you. Good evening, church. Good evening. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, so what I just want to share is um, what I think about Abraham. I think that was the first question. What comes to mind? And for me, what comes to mind is, aside from faith, which is very clear, is actually obedience. Abraham, he heard God and that was it. Like, it was very clear that he was a man who obeyed God. He just, you know, sometimes we overthink when God tells us something, we start to um, think of the possibilities and impossibilities. But for me, Abraham has always symbolized obedience. Someone that just heard God and he went with it. And that was very profound for me. Um, secondly, my Abraham moment, I believe the first was or is my walk with God. I believe God called me for a reason. I believe the time that it happened was very significant. And... That was definitely a push of faith for me. Um, secondly, I would say is when we take God, um, take God's word for what it is, it releases us into a different dimension. Because I remember, okay, I'm just going to be very fast. I remember when I was in uni, I remember when I graduated, and I remember um, this time where I really wanted to graduate with a first class. I, I was at the point where I just felt like I was going to graduate with the first class. I was doing what I needed to do. But the year before that, COVID hit, and so we had online exams and a lot of hurdles, yeah. And so I remember graduating with a 4.45, and I cried. I remember, I don't, I don't ever think I've ever said the word like I felt depressed. I didn't think that was what it was. So I just got to the point where I was like, why? You know, there are so many things that could have happened. Why, why this um, score? But I remember God's word to me after that was, just a time after that, after I had gotten out of that, was that he had called me to be excellent. So it didn't matter whether um, um, on paper it doesn't look like it is. But God's word to me in different ways always confirmed that he has called me to excellence and I will always excel. I take God's word as it is. Obedience is exactly what it is. Obedience. It's not the easiest thing, but it's what it requires to follow God. And that's what I'll say. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Obedience. We had to take some online comments so that we're not... Just one more? Yeah, one oh, more. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Omoye, and uh, I want to share my Abraham moment. So it's... I never really did have an Abraham moment until everyone was sharing and <laughs> I, I got mine. So, uh, yes, so the first is the revelation. So for me, it was the back-to-back -back revelation that Abraham had. And two, and I think they are connected, is the fact that Abraham was chosen. And it was chosen for this experience. It was chosen to experience God in this dynamic way and God did not hold back he just kept giving him back to back and I remember that 
um, one of the beautiful scriptures that I love a lot in the book of Acts was when Paul was recounting his experience and he said um, Ananias came to him after he had that um, conversion experience and he said Ananias spoke to him and said the God of your fathers has chosen you you know that you would know his will you would hear the voice of his mouth and you will see his face and for me that was Abraham's experience and the God of your fathers that's Abraham has chosen you so it's for me is the fact that I'm chosen and I really just want to have this back-to-back -back revelation so it's exciting for me thank you awesome you're chosen I am awesome. chosen we are chosen thank you so much Omoya. thank you yeah. so much so I just take I'll just take a few online um Ujua Lakwe Yakin Pelu says her Abraham moment is a promise that can never be broken regarding Nigeria though it tarries just like Abraham's situation the word has gone forth righteousness will exalt Nigeria in spite of all we see amen hallelujah amen, amen. Tokpe says my Abraham moment was knowing that even though my past isn't perfect God can still work with me if I simply yield and that he can help me grow in faith with him that God is not afraid of my past powerful um, Monique says knowing God will always come through even up to my 99.9 .9 moment of waiting yeah. Yeah. I am so looking forward to God's uncommon presence in this journey amen Omotola says, my Abrahamic moment was when I left an habit I had struggled with for many years, just like the way Abraham surrendered Isaac. Thank Bless you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Deborah says, my Abraham moment is letting go of an habit for good this afternoon. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, I think those are, those are a couple of ones that we have. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Such an awesome... I mean, if day or week one is like this I, I don't know how you know the rest of the few weeks we have ahead of us will be like but I hope that your your faith is charged and that you're expectant and you're looking forward to when we begin to dissect each of these points that we have raised today and really go deep and begin to see them manifested in our lives by the grace of God Thank you all so very much for sharing your Abraham moment and your expectations for the next few weeks. We'll be rounding off now, but I'm sure that you would agree with us that we cannot round off such a powerful session where we've spoken and like someone described on, on YouTube that we've, we've made affirmations, declarations tonight. And we just want to seal that in the place of prayer, if that's okay, before we go tonight. So I just ask Pastor Nii to just lead us in a time of prayer as we begin to close and just lay everything at the feet of Jesus tonight. I am Abraham's seed. I'm the chosen one. I'm the chosen one. The favored one. The called one. Oh, manakurope leroko birike shkopra de labo do kobokote. Can we make those, those declarations? Jafra de brahaskapa. I'm the chosen one, the favored one, the called one. Oh, I'm the loved one, the loved one. Yes, yes, the Lord loves me so much, so much, so much. He loves me. Jaha, e reketumbre do lebo gobogo tekere. E shatana makapa katekete. Renombra te la boko boko rokoti brede lebo kopa katika. Jibradi rapa la baka baka teke rose. Jibradi kaparunda na manaka tata. E zizi zeble do brade ba shata manako brede. Yes, he strengthens my faith in him. He strengthens my faith in him. He encourages me on this journey. Rapa te lebo in my work of faith it strengthens me day by day moment by moment hour by hour yes it refreshes me his hand is upon us 
His hand is upon us. His hand is upon us. Father, we thank you. Your hand is upon us, Lord. To turn us to generational blessings. His hand is upon us. To turn us into generational blessings. Separated, I embrace the promise. I embrace the promise. I receive the promise. Je le breke tombrete. Rapate, rapate. By faith, we embrace the promise. We receive God's promise for our lives. We receive God's promises for our lives. We receive them. Oh, yes. We receive them. We receive them. Rakapele do. We believe God. We trust Him unconditionally. We trust God unconditionally. We trust Him. Hey, le roto le breti capro to lorogobo. Shiprati, shiprati. Ele beron dreke tu sapata. E shibreto roko puri manakas kete. Shibrate, 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 shibrate. My capacity to walk with God and journey with Him, My capacity to walk with God and journey with Him, irregardless, is an answer tonight. Rekapuru to loko poko te, jibrate rakombele te, reketombre de lebo kopa kate, jibrate rapate la boko pa. Endu nondro te kapa, jibre doza, jibrade, jibrade kompo to zeze, jibrade. His hand is upon me. Yes, his hand is upon me. His hand is upon you. His hand is upon you. Is your God? Is your God? Can you call him the God of me? Kapaleto zizi. Eshete lepoko poko tea. Imprati the God of Abraham is my God. Epretuli poko pasheta. Embrutu sapatele poko tekete. Rika pano na bosha telebete. Hey, reke teke teke te. Imprati zaza. I journey with him, haha. He rutom breketos kapa. Jibrate retete reket. I journey into that which eyes have not seen, ears have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has he enter into the hearts of man that which God has promised me. That which God is leading me and bringing me into, I journey with God into it. I journey with God. I bless the, tr I bless new trails. Jibrade rakapalebo, rikapalebo tuske pretele. Jibrati na no no, rekete mbrandi na no skapretele bo tu sabab. Mani neshete. My faith is stirred up. My faith is stirred up. My faith is stirred up. Rikatom preti lebo zatakata inanu sate preketosha elatu ske preti lekete lebran denono. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. La 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 vakosa. Shira lebo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I sense that in this season, we're going to be praying some destiny-changing, destiny-defining prayers as we study the life of Abraham. And you know, like Pastor Rolake said, that when we think of him also, we think of altars. Altars that remain for generations to come. And that's what we'll be setting up as well and being conscious of this season in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we just give God glory for such an awesome, awesome start to the season? Just bless the Lord for about 30 seconds. Just give Him glory. Thank you. What a wonderful and powerful way to start the season. Thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we thank God. Amen. All right, so as we begin to round off, or as we round off right now, just to remind us of what's coming up in the next few days. You know, Pastor Nii, we have Wells of Revival on Friday, by the grace of God. Yes, we can celebrate that. So we're live here at the Dome. 
So if you can't, please make it down here on Friday. We will be streaming live, but you know how it is on Friday. You know, we're here to just release and just spend time in the presence of God praying. It's a mini vigil on Friday. And then... Vigil, mini vigil means it's three hours. Yes. So it's really, really a prayer meeting, but late in the night. You know what I mean? We're going to tarry. One of the things we're going to be doing by the Spirit of God is we're going to be battling with the horns. We're going to be battling with the horns. So Minister Okui and Minister Deji will be leading us in some prophetic time of warfare with the horns. You know, he said, let the instrument bring praises unto the Lord. Sometimes your worship then becomes a double-edged sword, right? We're going to be battling for the nation. We're going to be contending for our destinies. Three hours, 10 to 1 a.m pushing prayers join us in person amen thank you very much who's excited about that i am so make sure you're here very early and just join us you can join the pre-vigil prayers and then just go in to warfare once we start at 10 p.m and then on sunday thanksgiving sunday it's the first sunday of the month of august and so we're going to be having service here at the freedom center or at the freedom center 8 a.m and 10 30 a.m Sorry, I'm having to just help her with, uh, you know, a bit of, uh, uh, yeah. So Sunday, first service is Pastor John Elena Man. I'll be joining us for the first service. And the second service, we have Pastor Babo Gregor, who will bring in the word in second service. It promises to be. And Tina Day and Stella will be leading us with one music in a time of prophetic prophetic praise you don't want to miss any of those services but sorry i'm done helping you for the night thank you so much such you know amazing amazing things to look forward to we're looking forward to an awesome time on friday and sunday don't be selfish invite someone don't come to church alone come with someone as well god bless you all thank you and see you on wednesday next week and the wednesday next week sorry tell me what just reminded me so for this week just the, the Bible study hints. Study Genesis chapter 12, chapter 13, 14. Maybe we'll stop at 14. We'll leave the, the covenant. Just start to, you can start from 11 so you can see the background. But just do a bit of a study. And when you come next week, we'll tell you how all these things piece together. God bless you. No, one more thing. Sorry, PJ. Yes. You promised that you're going to give us some tips. Just how, right? <laughs> <laughs> how, just, a, just about five minutes or less. Just tips. Uh, okay, as so, study. so I, I, I don't know whether this is cheap advert for the owners of this OEM. I guess they'll come pay for it. But one of the Bible apps that have helped me is the Bible Hub. The Bible Hub. The beauty of the Bible Hub is that he compiles all the translations together and he gives you all, all sorts of commentaries and reference, cross-reference. So when you study with the Bible Hub, particularly like the parallel rendition, rendition when you just choose the, Bible, the parallel rendition, each verse will be put in various translations so that you can compare languages, right? Um, um, I also listen to people who have blessed me over the years on topical issues. So when I'm studying on the subject, I listen to, um, yes, I, can, I cannot start naming all of them. There are over 20 um, Bible teachers, past, present. I listen a lot to the set man, as expected, Dr. Tony Rappel, right? I listen to um, um, Kenneth E. Hagen. Kenneth Hagin Sr., right? I listen to W.A. Toza. I listen a lot to um, um, my friends. Let me come so you won't think I'm the, that ancient guy. So I listen to Dr. Mensah Otabel. Mm. I listen a lot to um, a lot of them out there. So you just, you just, uh, yeah, T.D. Jakes have blessed me for the past 25 years. It's just been such a phenomenon. I listen, I listen also to Pastor Chris Delvin and Pastor and his son. Or like you know, Pastor Chin Tokishako. Just, so the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, the safety, you are able to string this, these things together. You get perspective, you get robust parts. So make these study tools. Just create time and take a look at these things. What it does, it gives you a rich depth of the word but before you listen to any person's opinion go to the scripture yourself first have your notes this season go to a bookshop buy beautiful notes right 
the ones that you'll be proud to carry anywhere keep it close to you when that revelation hits you just write it down create a journal create a journey god bless you god bless you can we celebrate p jude thank you very much thank you thank you sir all right on that note please go and have an awesome week studying the word of god and i know that he will reveal himself to you in jesus name god bless you